One sore point uh, for most Nigerians is the issue of power, uh, talking about electricity power. And uh, you just had uh, the Power Works in Housing Minister there, Babatunde Fashola, speaking on uh, what's next uh, for the government in fixing that. Uh, joining us to look at the power situation in the country is a legal practitioner and an expert in energy law, uh, Dr. Yemi Oke. He joins us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, you, you've been about this, and uh, don't forget, uh, the, the last time we met, we were trying to look at uh, the issue of tariff and possibility of uh, making this work for us. And uh, your submission then was that Nigerians are uh, not about to pay more if they have uh, the power, yes. uh, supplies in their homes, in wherever they are. But listening to the uh, new minister, of power in that particular uh, report we just played. What comes to mind when he uh, brought the issue of uh, tariff, maybe uh, mm -hmm. increase, and the ability to have a willing uh, buyer and seller Salam. in the market? Thank you very much. Um, first and foremost, let me acknowledge uh, the industry of the minister. It shows that uh, he hit the ground running in terms of his uh, ability to have a clear understanding of the, of the problem. Of course, we're not surprised. Uh, it's always been a pride of the legal profession, and I call him an, an, an intellectual, not in the university. But uh, the issue of tariff, as you all say, is a very sensitive one. Tariff, simply put, is just paying for the power consumed. So it is illegal to make Nigerians pay for power not consumed. It is also criminal to consume power and not pay. So it's a two-way two street. It's a two-way stop. So then talking about uh, tariff, one, I, I still maintain my position. I don't know of any Nigerian who is averse to paying slightly more for power, if there is power to consume. Why? Because it's, it's cheaper to get power from the grid or off-grid. It's cheaper than maintaining your homes, running your homes on petrol or diesel, aside from procuring the, the hardware, the, the gen itself, and the maintenance. On the long run, it's all, all, always very reasonable to pay slightly higher for tariffs. But you must pay for what is actually consumed. That brings us to the issue of tariffs methodology, which the Honorable Minister is talking about. When you talk of tariff, it's a purely legal issue. Because tariff is regulated. And you cannot start to talk about tariff as a policy issue. No. It's embedded in the law. That's the provision of Section 76 of the Electric Power Sector Reform Act. So if you want to have a shortcut, we either go amend the law and go straight to having a decentralized tariff regime. Tariff methodology simply means the basis for agreeing what is to be charged to consumers. The principle says that you must encourage players, that is the, the discos, and to charge enough tariff to be able to recoup their investment with reasonable yield. It also says that well, tariff methodology should aim at facing off any form of production subsidy, in which case, whatever subsidy that is built into distribution or generation or transmission should be phased out gradually. That means put it back in tariff. And the problem here is this. The tariff structure we have now is not likely going to work because it touches production. That is why some, like us, will prefer a kind of feed-in tariff structure that touches consumption. Can you explain the difference, sir? Thank you. You talk about, you know, targeting production, and are you talking about what the Jenkos produce and how it is transmitted, or it must be produced before it's consumed, right? Yes, the, the, there are different, that's why tariffs, structure is a very complex one. Mm -hmm. And it's about saying, OK, we'll look at charging for 
power that I'm producing, that I'm giving to the consumers. So if I have limited number of consumers, that means I will make the limited consumers pay more. But if it's a feeding structure, you then have to expand the nest of your customers mm -hmm. to produce and service 10 million consumers as against putting the tariffs, distributing your costs around just 1 million consumers. So for, for the feeding structure, the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. Just like you're talking of tax structure, putting more people in the tax net. So to that extent, the, kind of, the tariff structure we're looking at now is such that if it takes 20 naira to produce a kilowatt, they put their costs and other operational expenses, then the consumer will be paying something in the region of 50. But if it takes the same amount to produce the same megawatt, then you can multiply that once you have increased number of consumers. That's one aspect of it. So my, our own strategy, my own suggestion is that, okay, why not increase the reach to have more customers? Those who are not already connected, those who are not already metered. That is why legally, legally, you cannot increase tariff until and unless you have in place one, metering. Prepaid meters. You must meter every home. And, and you don't hear that in, did you, list, did you hear that in that speech? That's not, that's one problem there. Mm -hmm. Because the existence, of course, maybe hasn't really adverted its mind to the fact that the first step is that you must meter everybody because it is, it is illegal to bill me for power and never consume. It is also criminal to consume power and not pay. So the starting point is to ensure that the meters are rolled out and everybody, every consumer is metered. Once that is done, mm -hmm. you la now look at what the law calls PICA, P-C-A-F, that is Power Consumer Assistance Fund, which means, okay, if it, poor underprivileged Nigerians cannot pay for the new tariff, then they're going to be in darkness. The law says no. There must be a kind of indirect subsidy for underprivileged Nigerians to be able to still pay the prevailing tariff. What the minister said was that there's been a new tariff order. We had MITO, that is multi-year tariff order in 2008. We had another one about, um, it's supposed to be a five year thing. We had another one in 2012, which was suspended. They reviewed last year, that is MITO 2-1. But that couldn't be implemented because of certain issues around that. Where we are now, is even not the best to have a regulated tariff structure in a deregulated power set. I was going to ask you that question. Now that we have multiple players in the field, how is it that we're having a regulated tariff structure? But maybe before you go there, can we just backstep a little bit and explain the PCAF? Okay. How would it be spread to those that cannot pay for the tariff? Thank you. Um, PCAF, Power Consumer Assistance Fund, is a dedicated pool under the law provided for in the Electric Power Sector Reforms Act that says eligible customers and other stakeholders who sh shed a bit of their earnings or profit to a, ca a kind of pool that the government will now use to subsidize eligible consumers, that is underprivileged Nigerians. And you who cannot... Are the, who are those funding that pick up? You and high. The discos, the jankos, and other stakeholders, the government, everybody. It's like a kind of shake of deals over time for big actors, big consumers, multinationals, corporations, big homes, Ikoi people, lucky people, VI access, and the rest. So this pay is slightly higher amount of, of, of tariff, like saying, okay, for every one megawatt, you drop two naira or one naira, which is put together and used to subsidize low income earners. They don't really consume much, maybe one or two uh, uh, spots, like, like bulk points, units. They don't really consume much so that we don't put them in darkness. It's done all over the world. But you cannot have pick up without meter. And if you don't meter, you don't have pick up, you cannot increase tariffs. That's what the law says. So, is it that we suspend the process of the law or we do it illegally? 